the burst dot com bubble and we're talking about bubbles and bursting bubbles and stuff you know this is a concept you know yeah a bubble is not a business item a bubble is something made of usually a kind of sapinified substance or a uh, you know surfactant that causes a thin membrane probably a colloidal membrane or a membrane between two volumes of air it's just what that's not economics okay the burst dot com com bubble you know so the what caused the bubble to burst question mark all right Partially it was the abuse of the concepts of presentation or presentations, plural. Not using the capability of the technology and the site became nothing but a catalog. The same thing could still be done and to a greater degree by the printed catalog. But the biggest thing was the code. Stuffy in affection in an inefficient hypertext markup language. Somebody's good idea when the original net was started as, as a sort of an inner office link link up of early PC type computers using telephones. Uh, they kept the code which was only supposed to be a stopgap measure using QWERTY typewriter keyboard characters to produce simple easy to learn code that anybody could learn a clumsy cumbersome inaccurate slow sloppy deficient code that was okay to use as a quick stopgap measure but not as a permanent fixture it was the pentagon's gift to mankind <laughs> The Pentagon, the Pentagon spoonbenders, and their magic-brained martial ineptitude. It's time you built a new building, boys. The old one, uh, you know, the old one will lose you the the next real war. I mean, it will lose you the next real war. Okay. They have innovations, all right, but the ideas get stolen. And when someone else takes credit for an idea, it gets dead-ended. The person who comes up with, the, uh, with an idea, the real person who comes up with an idea, you got it, gets more. The person who steals an idea never gets another one. Hence, no improvement or even better, no replacement. Same tank, same helicopter, same HTML. Same tank, man. You know, the Abrams. It's an improvement. That's all they did was improve stuff. You know, B-52 bomber. Why do why you call it 52? It came out in 1952. Maybe that wasn't why, but that's when it came out. There's st still the model for the passenger jets today. You know? I, what they do is just improved on the basic design. Well, they're going to tell me, oh, well, that's because it is the perfect design. Ha, ha, ha. Let's cover up. They, you know, somebody stole it. Okay. That, you know, which is okay. It's okay. That stuff is okay for the military. After all, it always has been a socialistic system since the, uh, the dawn of time. If you make it your career, you accept, you accept the lifestyle. You know, you can always get out after a few basic years. That's what I did did my three years and I was out of there you know it was my the end of my little uh, experiment with socialism except I had to do that a couple of other times in commune systems during the uh, uh, 70s and that was a disaster 
uh, some of my worst nightmares ever, you know. Uh, by now, you know, let's, uh, okay, you know, if you do that, if you're in that kind of thing, it's socialism, you accept the lifestyle. And you could always get out if you didn't like it, you know. But it's always a disaster for private industry to depend on military innovation. They, if you do that, you're going to get dead end streets. You know, when when private industry depends on military innovation, they get dead ended ideas, like uh, you know, the World War II truck. You know, by now the private sector should have had the side loader, trailer powered cylindrical axle drogue assisted braking smart dent evader you know they got Chatham arm armor man even that was military the smart dent evader individually parkable five trailer capable highway cargo transport system with life sign monitor wake or sleep break cabin capability but even that is still your old truck basic design with some uh, modern-esque Australian road train adaptation as for the military I mean by now they should have had treadless amphibious tanks at 150 mile per hour off-road auto nav drive capability and non-lethal auto load 87 mil impounder cost-cutted weapon systems on board on board the mobile platform helicopter rotor blades that don't break the sound barrier or leave heat signatures with three-quarter mock transport cruise potential with smart rocket tip second chance landing capability laser tape servers the laser tape servers with duo senti senti millibit uh you know um let's see we've got militarabit uh run straight line retrieval on a mechanical barrage 2000 backpack field computer i mean come on what are they in the army for? The chow? <laughs> That's some weapon. That's some weapon. A guided mess hall. Look out, boys. Someone will steal that idea for sure. You know, they had the dot com burst because all the theys who were anything in the business stole every last darn idea they could uncover they aren't innovators just extremely good innovator finders they can only bend spoons they can't invent them it reminds me of the joke about one Scotsman stealing an idea from another and getting the credit but never coming up with a subsequent idea you know he couldn't. He never come out. Came up with a subsequent idea, you know. Uh, because those who hired the wrong Scotsman kilted the goose that produces the golden eggs. <laughs> hey, get rid of the HTML. Go to direct binary transponders and look behind the idea for the innovators. Will the real innovator please stand up? If the imposters, if the imposters stand to, well, buddy, you've got to find out the hard way, or your little dot will burst next. I'll give you a hint. The imposters are the guys claiming that the dot-com revolution was just a bubble. Just they're claiming it was a bubble. It wasn't. 
it actually was the book cookers dupes missed opportunity.